Hi, everyone. I'm JM Saponaro, Engineering Manager at Datadog, and I'm super excited to do this talk for the general availability of Airbyte. Today, we're going to talk about Airbyte and how it fits in our self-serve data and analytics stack within Datadog. Most of you probably build already an IKEA furniture on your own, right? The feeling is pretty good. You do it yourself, well, with instructions. And at the end, you trust it. You know how it's made because you do it, you did it yourself. And you're pretty proud of your creation. You even show it to your family and friends. And they do that. They create this magic by giving you three things, the pieces, the tools, and the instructions. So now what if instead of pieces, you get data? And instead of instructions, you get knowledge on how to use this data. Does that mean that this is what we call self-serve data and analytics? And in the end, we get the same results. Do you get this feeling of like, because you do it yourself, you trust it and you show it to, to others, you democratize it. Today, we're going to talk about self-serve data and analytics at Datadog. Why self-serve is important? Why it helped us scale self-serve data analytics up to 5,000 employees and more, and the stack to scale this? Where does Airbyte fit in this stack? And finally, the benefits of open architectures. Like I said, I'm engineering manager at Datadog. I had the chance to support multiple teams within the data analytics department. These teams are composed of software engineers, backend engineers, data analysts, data engineers. You probably know Datadog already. Um, it's a unified platform for all your observability and security for your infrastructure and application at scale. Today, we have dozens of different products that are willing to do that. And as you can guess, behind each of these products, there are data being produced. There are like teams who need data to do their job, to make decisions, to lead projects. So for a data analytics department, like the one I have the chance to work with, it comes with a lot of challenges around serving all these use cases, all these people's different personas within the company. And we need to be here to support them with the data analytics needs they have. So why self-serve is important when we are talking about data analytics? Let's go back to the mission of our teams. It is to empower every person at Datadog to easily interact and derive value from data. More concretely, that means that people can use data and leverage it without any help, and even better, without your team's help. And that's key for your company and also for your own team, because that means that you can focus on high value initiatives and not having to answer every single small request. People can tackle these on their own most of the time. That also means that as your company grows, your data team doesn't necessarily have to grow as fast. And finally, it's all about creating a culture within your company to use data to back up decisions and again, to, to lead projects and building this data-driven company culture. So let's go back to the three main ingredients, the data, the tools, and finally the knowledge. And let's focus on the first one. We often hear uh, in our industry this term like data as a product, because that's true. Like the data itself that teams like us um, provide to the rest of the company is a key product. So what we do is that we provide what we call a single source of truth for all Datadog to use. They have the same view of the world about our products, operations, and the business. We integrate with dozens of different data sources within the company, SaaS tools, internal data stores, and we feed that into our single source of truth. Of course, under the hood, it's slightly more complex how to bring all this data, we use various tools. We'll talk more in details about where Abyte fits, but we have overall a self-serve intake platform where Abyte plays a key role, which is going to bring in all the raw data for all the data sources. And then we can have our analytics engineers or data analysts doing all the transformation necessary within our warehouse directly with SQL. 
and that builds the single source of truth. For more complex data pipelines or usually larger data, for data dog that usually means telemetry data, we still use Spark ETL pipelines. All of that is powered by an event-driven in-house workflow manager that we built. And I want to insist on one thing. In single source of truth, the word single is very important because that means that now all the consumer within your company can use the same data and agree on that. That means all departments from engineering to marketing, customer success and HR, but also all the different applications allowing these people to consume this data. Data discovery tools, BI tools, notebooks, or just engineering teams using these data in their own workflows, their own products with code. The second key ingredient is the tooling. And we're going to dig more into like the different tools that allowed us to scale self-serve data analytics up to 5,000 employees and more. So let's go back and on the history of data analytics at Datadog. When I joined in 2015, we were about 100, 200 employees with a centralized team, which was actually only me doing data analysis for all the people who had small requests. And I kind of worked and then we started hiring more data analysts to help me, data engineers. And as we grew and grew and grew, we started doing things more seriously. We started building Spark ETL data pipelines because that was the main technology that we all were used to have for extracting, transforming, and loading data into our central data warehouse. And then the community kept growing, almost doubling every year. And at one point, once we reached like a thousand, almost 2,000 employees, it was super clear that there was no way having a centralized team helping every single department, the hundreds of people in these departments for every data analytics use case was going to scale. So we had to reinvent our organization and we went from decentralized team to semi-decentralized with a central team helping other departments with their own data analysts to do data analytics on their own. And the tooling had to adapt as well from doing everything with Spark, which is more heavy, slower to update and reach, we started adopting ELT with technologies that make progress with new data warehouses capabilities and tooling like Airbyte. And this self-serve data analytics stack goes from the very beginning when you intake the data, then when you enrich it with transformation, when you run data quality checks to make sure that the data is accurate and can be used by your employees allowing them to discover the data on their own and finally to leverage this data in analysis, reporting, and other use cases. So let's dig a bit into each of these components of the self-serve data analytics stack, starting with the end, the analysis and the reporting, because that's where we started. That's the, the, the front face of our data and tooling to our internal users. That's the first thing they, they use. A Datadog analysis and reporting is done in two main systems, a BI tool and notebooks. A BI tool, we decided to, add, to adopt uh, one that does very, very well, the 90% of use cases for analytics. Basic reporting, basic questions where you just need a table or an histogram to answer your question. And we wanted an intuitive experience. We went with Metabase. And for more complex data and analysis, when people need to use uh, existing piece of code from uh, various repositories or to use complex more complex languages like Python or Scala, we have Jupyter Notebooks. And both of these tools are, of course, integrated with our ecosystem. And what's powerful in these tools is that they are customizable. Because open source, we can adapt them, adapt their, the user experience when users use them to feed their needs and also to automate a bunch of mechanisms like data access controls, thanks to APIs, and finally, to customize the UI for data dog needs. Second piece, data discovery, because before you do the analysis, the reporting, you need to know which data you're going to need to perform it. We decided to build our own in-house data catalog and data discovery tool because we had already existing components in it, a metadata store, 
some UI components we could use, some backend APIs, some backend like uh, Postgres databases. Our data discovery tool has three main pillars that it needs to provide. One that allows to browse data when you don't really know where to start, you don't really know what to search for. You can just browse it, filter, slice and dice the different data assets that already exist within our company. Then, of course, a powerful search where you can search and find matches in the keyword, the descriptions or the metadata itself. And finally, once people find a data set that should answer that question, they need to understand and trust it. To understand it, they need to, to be able to find out who owns this data, who owns the source of it, where is it coming from, which different steps of transformation is it going through. Finally, to trust it, they need to understand the quality of it, the freshness, the description, the quality of it. Next, since we're talking about data quality, data quality monitoring. Of course, we are an observability company, so this is very, very important to us, and we put a lot of efforts in it. We have our own data quality platform that we developed, which has three layers, metrics collection and storage, where people can then uh, set up expectations and validations and then give visibility on if these expectations are met or not. It's integrated with all the data processing stack we have, like I mentioned, are by DBT, Spark, Python jobs as well. It needs to be flexible because we have dozens of different data teams, data engineering teams, working on various products who have different needs. So they need to be able to customize their own quality checks. And finally, once you have information about the quality metrics and if they are meeting expectations, you need to let people act on it. So it's fully integrated with Datadog and all the other team features we have. Next, transformations. Enriching the data, pulling the, putting all the business logic, cleaning the data from its raw state to something that's actually usable by various people within our company. We went with DBT for most of the data and we let people add business logic with SQL, which is usually known by various data practitioners, not only data engineers, but also data analysts, just even like power users within our company with some analytics uh, knowledge. Of course, it's fully integrated with our ecosystem, including our workflow manager. And we are opening it. It's not only us owning some DBT models and some data sets business logic. So we want to outsource it because it's self-serve, but we want to make sure that we control the way data models are built. So we open it, but with strong conventions. The data analysts in various departments, they own their own data, their own data model, their own business logic, but we provide conventions and guidance through tooling or simply um, democratization of our, our best practices. Finally, of course, observability is very important. Data lineage, be able to know if the pipeline ran successfully or not, data quality monitoring and alerting. And the last piece of it, data intake. How can we make that also self-serve? That's where Airbyte comes in. What's the position of Airbyte in our stack? Like I hinted it uh, a few slides ago, we have a self-serve intake platform with Airbyte and some direct connectors between data sources and our warehouse. Here, the three main features we want to provide to users are one, making sure they don't need to worry about the integrations part with the data source, the connectors, and all the scheduling and what happens to be able to bring in these data. They should just focus on which data they need, which data source, and when does it need to be refreshed. So we provide all the connectors with the different data sources. Again, SaaS tools, data internal data stores, the, the event-driven workflow manager, we abstract it away um, as much as possible. And we make it accessible through an intuitive dedicated UI or simply very intuitive config files. Finally, as always, for Datadog, observability is key. Be able to know when instructions are working well or not, 
Same thing, being able to instrument data quality checks and receive alert when something is wrong. So why Airbyte? Why did we go with Airbyte a few years ago? The main feature that was super appealing to us was the out-of-the-box connector catalog. We went from having to maintain our own connectors, dozens of connectors, which could break because the API changed or because like someone, the, the, the rate is limited or someone changed something in the, the configuration of the, the, the source tool. Airbyte provides dozens of different connectors, whether they are maintained by Airbyte itself or by the community. And I think there is a marketplace coming up. That allows us to be super quick at delivering new data. We can expose new data very quickly. And it's key because as the data keeps growing, there is a constant need for new connectors. There are more and more data sources appearing across the company and people need to act on it. Second, Airbat is extensible because it's open source and it provides features for us to be able to create our own connectors when needed. Better than that, not only it's extensible, but it can be made self-serve. For example, through the no-code connector builder that data analysts can use. They don't need to worry about APIs or data engineering knowledge. They can just focus on doing their work, which is bringing new data, actionable data for their department. Finally, open source means that we can run Airbyte on our own infrastructure, which is key for Datadog. At our scale, we need to comply with a ton of different rules for privacy and security. And since Airbyte is deployed on our own stack, it's easy for us to do it. And if you ask me about like one feature I'm excited about in Airbyte V1, well, again, like the main reason why we went with Airbyte was the, the catalog of connectors. And there are two exciting features coming up, the, the marketplace for connectors and also the AI copilot that allows people to build new connectors even faster. So I talked about the benefits of having Airbyte open source. So, but beyond data intake, like there are many benefits of open architectures. If we go back on the, diff the different tools in our stack for self-serve data and analytics, if you look at today at Datadog, which different tools we use, you will see that it's a mix of open source and in-house uh, solutions. Because we have the capacity to build them, maintain them, and it allows us to be very flexible to integrate them with our complex ecosystem. And that's true also for Airbyte. The benefits of open architectures are multiple. The three main ones I can talk about, one, it's extensible. Like I said, like you can slightly change the software, the code to adapt to your needs or to your user's needs. You can easily integrate it with your own ecosystem. At Datadog, again, we have a mix of in-house platforms and systems, and we need to be able to integrate that with, with tool, tools like Airbyte. And finally, again, I talked about it, self-hosting for us is very important for compliance, security, and cost control. So to recap, self-serve is key because it allows, it allowed us to scale as Datadog was growing and to build a data-driven culture. Self-serve is not only about reporting, it's about the whole tools chain in your stack, from data intake to data analysis, going through data quality, data discovery, data transformation. And Airbyte is key for the data intake. And it comes with a ton of benefits, including the benefits that comes with open architectures. Thank you very much for having me, and I'm super excited to see all the features coming with Airbyte V1.